The thing that I love uh, in, in blockchain and from the beginning, it was uh, the human connections that we could have. Like talking with, chatting with people, uh, having calls and connecting with people around the world very easily and fast. That was the thing that makes me stay and grow as an artist. Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm here with Harto, who is a generative artist who is having a lot of success lately and, and I want to learn more from him and his journey. Hello Harto, how are you? No, fine, fine. Nice, nice to meet you and thank you for, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. No, it's awesome. It's awesome to have you here and let's start with your with your name because we were chatting a bit about that before starting the recording. Is it Harto or Harto, what's what's the story behind it? Yeah, a lot of people are like Harto, like, no, I, it's Harto in Spanish uh, because uh, I, I was looking for an artistic name like a lot of years ago and uh, I was uh, fed up of uh, looking uh, for the name in Spanish. Uh, it's like tired of, uh, of searching, etc. And I think it has a little bit of relation also with uh, tired of working of something that I don't like. So mm -hmm. I, to do art and arto was my <laughs> my finding yeah yeah it's uh the, the the i mean it comes from from spanish right arto fed up so that that makes sense and well arto it's it's been a i think for you it's been an amazing month right your your collection golden ratio uh, it's it's having a lot of like a great reception on ordinals and i was wondering um What's what's your background? Because you, it seems like you started creating generative art on the blockchain around one year ago, but you have a, a background in, in creative and, and design and also as an artist. Can you can you tell us a bit about your background, Harto? Yes, um, I've been like drawing since I'm uh, I remember I think that since I'm two th three years old. Um, and all my my life, I I did like. Uh, experiments or uh, like technological things uh, i i studied in fact at the beginning uh, design design and industrial modelism um i i did technical studies mixed with design because i thought that living from art wasn't possible so it was like okay i need to live from something yeah. and this was my my first touch with the studies with art and design but uh, I didn't do um, uh, both art, uh, bellas art. Yeah, like the typical uh, art art studies, right? So you, you no. don't come from, from a typical uh, art studies background. You were looking for something more technical. And Arto, you are you are based in Spain, right? Is that, is that yes. right? You're Spanish? I'm Spanish. I'm born in uh, near Barcelona. Uh, but the, the last uh, years I was living in France for four years uh, in the south of France. Uh, but now okay. I'm here in Barcelona, yeah. Barcelona, Barcelona. Yeah, it's uh, Ana Carreras is an artist I know. She's she's in, based in Barcelona. And it feels to me that there are every day more artists from Spain uh, in the generative in the generative art fields. That's uh, quite interesting. And so, Harto, can, can you tell us a bit how you discover blockchain? And, and Or were there any, like, you had a career in design before entering the space? Maybe... Can you tell us a bit about what kind of work were you doing before before the these uh, recent experiments with the blockchain art? Yes, that that's funny. I I, I was living in France when I discovered uh, well blockchain. I I discovered it like a lot of years ago, uh, like everyone, but I didn't enter. <laughs> uh, yeah. But in uh, 2019, 2020, when we had the pandemic and uh, all these. Uh, changes in the world. Um, I was working as a, a designer and also comedian in France. Oh, uh, okay. And, um, as you can imagine, like theater and all the physical things uh, were almost impossible this time. Uh, so I started to work again on digital things uh, because of my background of design and uh, industrial modeling. Uh, and I started doing things in the blockchain. I found the blockchain uh, very interesting. Um, and I started to do some projects, and I found NFTs in 2020, and from then I didn't stop. 
Okay. And and what what kind of projects were you were you doing? Was there like uh, to working with brands or it was more like personal projects? What what kind of projects were those? Yeah, at the beginning because we we weren't a lot in for example uh open sea wasn't live, I think. It was it was Rarible, I think. And in Rarible yeah. we were like I don't know, a, a thousand artists. So I was doing like random art, uh, the, testing things in 3D because I, I've done a lot of 3D. And a, a brand contacted me, well, a, a sort of studio, and we we did a, a project with WWF uh, Panda Labs. Uh, for, okay. So basically, we were the first to do uh, mixing NFTs uh, with uh, good causes, with animals and. Um, mm conservation etc uh didn't work very well because in 2020 everyone cared yeah. about this uh, yeah. but this was my first start as um like a contractor like let's say like doing a, a an invoice to to this kind mm -hmm. of project. then and from there I, i did a lot of design projects with this company uh little by little i started to work, to work with other projects or other things okay okay got it so Yeah, that's interesting. So you, you got into the space very early, what you could say very early when it comes to blockchain art, because in 2020, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of people yet. And mm -hmm. so you were early in Rarible. Okay, that's that's interesting. And how how were the those the, the first the first pieces that you were publishing, you said mm -hmm. 3D, so it was more 3D based? Yes. I mean the the first three or four I didn't have this this idea of scarcity in mind of of real doing art for doing art and and being an artist for me was like this is fun let's try some things and i did some collage or whatever very mm -hmm. very likely that now I, i didn't burn it because for me it's historical and then i did a collection of 3d uh, assets that were quite of funny also because for me it was like a funny part it, uh, it was a we had a lot of room for innovation in this time and collaboration with artists because we were in a lot so it was not important to have really like a strong uh, style and uh, and there were no FOMO let's say like this behind yeah. and it was very open um, yeah hmm. yeah it was more like experimentation right and I, I think plenty of the people uh, were there Just because they were curious, right? They weren't looking to to make money or to, you know, there wasn't that sort of ambitious or uh, that potential early on, and things changed drastically, right? In 2021, 2022. Um, and when did you switch um, hard to to code to coded art and to generative art? When was the time that you focus on that? Because I think you have released couple of projects um the golden ratio that we mentioned but also i believe it's formations right formations i, I collected one piece so when when did you change your mindset and said okay i'll i'll explore generative coded art cool. thanks so much for for collecting information uh, i think that coding it's something that has been like following me since a, a lot of years i mean I even did like six months of engineering before moving to moving to design, and most of my friends are tech people, so I was always like playing with code and trying things. And in 2021, uh, I saw art blocks and generative art, and I was like, "Wow, like it's a mix of art and technology, way more than 3D and with code, and I need to learn to do that in this." So all 2021, I was like trying things, asking to my friend uh, that it's uh, one of my best friends is coder. And finally, in 2022, I no, I I didn't mean that in 2022. I think uh, the first one was block blocks that was in uh, January 2023, but it took like three or four months of coding. So yes, at the middle of 2022, too, I was mm. really using coding every day and trying things and, and etc um but uh it took me a lot of time yeah coding takes time uh, but it's it's good if you have friends right that can can support you do do you usually now these days work alone or you have technical 
people that support you? No, I think it's when you want to scale as an artist and also as someone that is not an engineer or I, I know how to code, I can uh, find things and, and connect do, uh, dots and, and create what I want, but there are people that has been coding like for 10, 15, 20 years, so it's very important, important for me to check, optimize the code with them and say hey, that could be better, etc. Um, normally what I do now is I code almost everything and once i'm happy with that we check it and we clean it together and mm -hmm. uh, if i am stuck in a co in a part of the code i ask something but it's not, it wasn't the case of the golden radio the golden radio was only optimized so i was very happy because i finished all the artistic part uh only i think that level four was checked by by pierre i think but um yeah yeah no no that that makes sense especially um a collection like the golden ratio because it's very complicated to come up with these um long form generative projects right there are many things that could go wrong um and in the case of that collection can you can you tell us a bit about the story behind it what where did you get the inspiration and um yeah how long how long it, it took to to complete that project mm -hmm. Yeah, inspiration. Well, since I'm I'm a designer and also I did a lot of photography and I painted a lot. Since I have thirteen, I think uh, I I I found the the Fibonacci sequence and mm -hmm. then I investigated a little bit and I understood that uh, the golden ratio and the sequence was everywhere in nature because I'm a very big lover of nature. Uh, since then, I've I've been using a lot. I mean, even in photography, when when you do like the third uh, uh, rule, I don't know in Sp in Spanish is la regla de los tres tercios. The third, oh, okay. Uh, uh, one third, one, one third, third rule, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And with that, and also Fibonacci, you you can put it inside, and for um, like putting more presence in your photography or like uh, pointing to something it's very interesting to use that and in design and in logos and whatever so for me it was like a tool and something that i've been using always so i wanted to do a sort of uh, homage no homenaje mm -hmm. uh, like uh, okay. it's everywhere so i should use it <laughs> or I, I i should took this concept and push it as maximum uh, so I started to to do some testing and trying to uh, use the most basic um, grid that is mm -hmm. rectangles that grows from the center and can go to the infinite. And okay. from there, I did a lot of variations. I put my style, my colors, and you you tweak it. Yeah, no, that's that's. I mean, the the. The ratio, this the golden ratio, is such a popular. Uh, as you said, it's just pretty much everywhere in design, photography, architecture, and and it's quite interesting that this is maybe there are more, but this is um, one of the first collections that really embraces it in the generative art world, right? They probably, I think, I've seen some artists using it. I think Leander Herzog has used it in their in his work, but not not as like the centerpiece of of the collection and i think that's uh that was a, a, a great idea and it was released on ordinal so i'm very very curious about your experience there because you you have released artworks on ethereum but also on ordinals and it feels like ordinals um inscriptions are getting very popular right and and there seems like there is a strong community how, how was your experience there uh, hard to creating works for ordinals, was it complicated because the technology is kind of still in development? So how how how, how challenging was it compared to doing generative art on Ethereum, for example? Uh, I joined ordinals in February 2023, so the first week of the protocol. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a lot of friends like uh, checking ordinals and someone told me hey you, you should do that and you should try it and i was like yes why not why not mm. so i i read the the document in the uh, ordinals.com uh, the 
the main doc that K Casey yeah. Rodamore did. Um, and I was amazed. I was like, no way. It's finally you can't create like NFTs on Bitcoin and mm. not as stacks or other things we're doing, but really inscribing like art on chain. Um, for me, there is a sort of explanation that it's um, very interesting. Is like in, in Ethereum, you are going to take um, like a coin or um, uh, some money and you are going to create a smart contract uh, with, mm -hmm. this, uh, with this coin. But in fact, in, in Bitcoin, you, you take really the, the, uh, the coin or the billet, the whole billet. Uh, the bill, the bill. The bill, you have the bill and you can draw inside of the bill. The bill. Mm. And that's the interesting part because we are inscribing the art inside of the, of the uh, protocol yeah, the, in a yes. way not really like in Ethereum. And this blows my mind because it's like, it's a new way of creating art. So yeah. a new way of uh, explaining uh, where is the art and how, how when it was created, etc. And then you add you add all these layers of rarity and uh, sad uh, sad hunting, etc. Where you yeah. can and and it's very interesting. Yeah, it's a new paradigm. Um, it's not really it's not NFTs. It's kind of a new form of NFTs. But as you said is inscribed on Bitcoin, right? On the bills themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 just, I see that there is a very strong community of developers right now. There are multiple crypto wallets for these. There are many marketplaces supporting it. Um, it feels like it's going uh, very, very fast. And when it comes to the technicalities of the collection, um, was it complicated to create this you know the randomization and actually inscribing the collection on the on the blockchain on the Bitcoin blockchain. How complicated was that compared to what our blogs or other platforms are doing for for an artist? You know, to code it as an artist was it challenging or or not so much? Yeah, that changed a lot uh, the last months. Like the first time we were like inscribing like starting to understand how it works because you need to download your own uh, node create your own node in at home and then uh, take the or client that it's like in cmd like uh, these old <laughs> uh, <laughs> softwares in the uh, so you you see this and you are like okay we are very very early uh the inscription process was like all manual like, like say with a, with a script etc um, and at the beginning, for example, the first collection, for the first collection that I did, uh, we inscribed the JPEGs. It's not the code. Uh, okay. Even it did in vanilla JavaScript, and we could describe the code, but we didn't know it because it was the first week. Because you see a lot of uh, early collections that were like this because they didn't know it. So now it's more like uh, like R blocks. Why? Because thanks to the, the evolution of the protocol, thanks to people uh, like, for example, Danny and, uh, from OnChain Monkey or other builders, uh, they they did a way of inscri inscribing uh, that includes uh, recursion and parent-child and other systems, mm -hmm. let's say, um, that allow you to inscribe it. Like, you, you can do a collection, and you can inscribe inside of this collection the the recursive okay. algorithm. So you don't need to put all the time your code, but you can call it. Let's say like um, so. For okay. example, now you have like we upload our code uh, that is going to be our parent, and then the ordinals uh, that are the childs are going to call this code, and you are mm. going to use be very little amount of data. Okay. Um, for example, like the the golden ratio, it's extremely small. Every uh, ordinal is zero point one six kilo octets. That it's like super tiny, yeah. it's super tiny. Mm, that's quite interesting. I, I didn't know. I, I I read about recursion and the parent the child relations, but now that you explain it, it makes more sense to me. That that. That makes sense. And so the code is on chain, actually, and then there is this recursion method 
that calls the code so it's not really on on everywhere so that that seems quite a smart um and and when it comes to the randomization of uh, the outputs um is it because our blocks and and other platforms like fx hash when you mint you get a output right like a new output you don't really know what you will get is that system also incorporated on ordinals that for the for the collectors for the minters that they get an unexpected output or or is it that you mint all the works and then they collect so it depends on the on the project and in your code for example in the case of the golden ratio i did a, a curated uh, collection so okay. i decreated 420 seats i saw like uh, you know, 10 10k or something like this artworks i was like mm. this one i like this one i like so i keep the seats uh then we inscribed those seats so okay. that the the collection is going to be as i want because otherwise we are going to have random outputs uh that also is an option you you can have a way of inscribing in your script in your uh, code that is going to be randomized for example mm. you can randomize with the mempool uh you can randomize with the bitcoin uh, transaction Se- uh, whatever sequence. you can choose how you want to randomize but for me it's more interesting also always or almost always uh create a a curated uh collection because you never know what output is going to appear and maybe it's really ugly and it's a lot of work because you need to really create like um, 400 or 500 or whatever yeah. but yes. i prefer it like this but there is yeah. uh, ways to 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 randomize yes okay okay got it oh that's uh, fantastic and how does it feels to to get this sort of reception last time i checked i think the secondary volume cross over 1 million dollars so that's quite quite impressive so how how does that change your mind like in, in the terms of your focus as a now as a full-time generative artist or what what is in your mind are you planning to create more projects how is it like how are you receiving all these at the beginning it's hard I, i've been passing a sort of different phases of greed and stress and i don't know a lot of different faces and the first days you can't believe it then you have a sort of greed of oh my what what's happening i'm doing a lot of volume etc um now i'm more like i i try to don't check the numbers don't push yeah. myself to, to, to do it because otherwise you are all the numbers and talking about the the floor price and it's not the important thing the important thing is the art and creating art and uh and i don't know my my now right now the the most important for me is like take the time to to create good art um there are going to be more collections for sure because i'm young but i'm not going to do it like every <laughs> every month mm-hmm. but i don't need this year like to generate more money to live let's say like this because yeah. uh the gallery uh did a, a lot uh, for me and now we are uh, we are set up for all the year so um, i'm going to concentrate on bringing one of ones or collaborations or qu- qualitative work but um, yeah you, you are not so stressed on creating a new collection right now you, you're thinking through uh, more on the art side uh, so that that makes a lot of sense and it kind of removes the pressure right the selling part you you kind of got a a great release and now you can focus on on the art you really want to make so that's that's an exciting position to be honest uh in heart to you mentioned the gallery so the the golden ratio was uh, released via vivid right that's the name of the ordinals gallery and are you part of the team because i think you're a curator on the on the gallery are you you were part of the founding members or what's your role there in the gallery and into the future of the gallery yes uh vivit is um is uh, was co-founded uh by another guy uh, well not vivit but at the beginning was order and co i recovered this project some months ago because the founder wasn't uh, delivering the things that the community wanted and maybe it was complicated for him so basically we recovered the same concept uh, in july august uh, in, and we created uh, vivid 
So Vivid was co-founded by me, uh, Gerard, that is the CEO of Dreng uh, Dranger. I never say well the name Dranger. Uh, okay. That is the tech studio and company in uh, that it's in Switzerland, and the studio has three people: Gerard, Florent, okay. and Peter. So basically, okay. the members uh, now we are four, uh, but we have an, uh, like people that help us uh, externally for the marketing, the community, etc. Okay. Um, so basically, in terms of positions, I'm the curator uh, for now. Uh, I would love to to have more curators with me because I, I want to concentrate in art, not only in creating. Mm -hmm. I love the experience of helping artists, but is not mm -hmm. uh, my passion. My passion is to create, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm I'm happy with that, and I like the the idea of uh, helping smaller artists that uh, struggle struggle like me at the beginning to mm -hmm. to do what I'm doing now. That is work from art. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's that's exciting. I have um, many artist friends in the generative art world, and they are they. I have seen multiple of them chatting about vivid right like applying and and how to how to get their collections up there and it's a curated gallery right so you have to move kind of not super fast you have to select the collections right and and make sure both artists and collectors get the right experience right and and it, after kind of after after getting in the spotlight now it's 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 exciting but also it's could be harder, right? Because you have more eyes on on the platform. And for those artists listening, hard to how how can they apply? How can they be part of an upcoming release with Vivid? Is there a process for that? Yes, it's it's mostly like uh, almost every curated gallery in in Ethereum. You you go to the website and there is a submission uh, where you can apply uh, with some questions, uh, formulary, etc. Uh, the best way is to come also to to the to the community and chat and see what's happening and understand how it works, etc. And as you say, like in fact, it's a pressure because sure we have more eyes, etc. But we are not going to change the way we do the things, and we don't want to rush. Uh, our collectors and holders know that we are trying to bring as much as quality as possible and innovation, and mm -hmm. we want to be like. Uh, like super big volume and all the time bringing projects and uh, growing and growing and growing. We prefer to do the things like well, uh, find uh, some good artists interested in in dropping ordinals and help them. Something more like a traditional gallery, but in the ordinal ecosystem where you guide them, you help them to create the the tech part, the marketing, etc. Okay. Okay. So when you said uh, supporting artists, it's it's so when you support them, it's more on the tech side and the marketing side. That's where usually artists need help, right? That's what I uh, and I uh, lived all my career as an artist. I mean, at the beginning, you can't start alone. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do marketing and community and tech and etc. No, but it's too much. Uh, if you want to Concentrate in your art. You you need a, a team of people, and that's what Vivid offer. And I think that every artist, well, if you want to do everything, you can do it. But should delegate, and because if you delegate, you can like concentrate in in doing what what you love. So, yeah. right, yeah, and and there are many galleries out there that are doing an amazing job. Right, like Vivid is a good example. And there are so many uh, galleries in different forms and shapes um, supporting artists. And yeah, it's, I see what I see is that many of these galleries start with artists, right? It's usually artists that not all, but most of the time are artists are behind the project. And I think that's great because it's it's a way to protect kind of the artist interest, right? And not so much on the revenue side, which is tricky in this space. Um, but that's exciting, Harto. Congrats, congrats on that release. And what can you tell us about the collectors? Have, have you had many interactions uh, with collectors that found you recently? 
and what kind of questions do they have? What, what are they interested in general uh, about your art and about ordinals or vivid? What what are like the common questions that people have these days? The thing that I love uh, in in blockchain and from the beginning it was uh, the human connections that we could have, like talking with chatting with people, uh, having calls and connecting with people around the world very easily and fast. That was the thing that makes me stay and grow as an artist, in fact. Mm. I I talked with almost every collector that they wanted to talk with me and the community know it that I am always there chatting and going in all the discords I have. I don't have any discords. Uh, <laughs> it's very important because, for example, if you are in a fair or in a gallery and, and you are selling your art, when a collector by the art likes to understand who are you, you are going to talk with him or her, and uh, it's a special connect, uh, connection. Like mm -hmm. um, the process of selling art, it's not only like this transaction. There is so much things behind, and I think it's very important to meet them and talk with them. Yeah, so. yeah, totally, and especially because those that are interested in chatting are the ones that are really passionate, right, about art and collecting and follow your, your development as, a, as an artist. Um, so yeah, definitely that's a good advice uh, for, for artists out there then to start to, to chat, uh, to chat with collectors and, and help them understand your, your vision, right? And what, what is it that you are trying to do? Awesome. Um, and, what about your other projects? Um, and I mean, so I have, now that you found Ordinals, right? And, and Ordinals seems to be a fast-paced ecosystem and there are many builders, many artists. Now it's getting more mature. What are your thoughts on releasing art on other blockchains? Are you open? Are you kind of okay with different blockchains? Um, or will, do you see yourself focusing purely on Ordinals? From now on, so I tried a lot of different chains since I started on, in the blockchain. I tried Ethereum, Solana, uh, Tezos, and now Bitcoin. So I'm a blockchain agnostic, let's say like this, because it's a tool. The, the blockchain is a tool. Mm -hmm. But in that now, I think I think that. I'm going to concentrate more in ordinals because I'm very excited of the ecosystem. The things that are done in a different way because we are more early, so most of the people are passionate. They, mm -hmm. they want to build new things because Bitcoin was the first blockchain and there are people that have been here waiting for something like this for years. And the fact that it's fully on chain, that it's way more secure than any other blockchain, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a very important fact. Uh, why is it? Why is that? Why is that? It's more secure, you know. It's more decentralized, for example, than than Ethereum. Uh, the blocks are way slower, so it takes more time to create a block. I think that Ethereum was like seconds or minutes to create a block. Mm -hmm. uh, Second, sorry, uh, maybe like sixteen seconds or I don't know, but uh, something like this. And Bitcoin, a block is going to take between ten minutes to two hours. So okay. going to validate validate all the uh, uh, transactions is slower, so it's more secure because you have a lot of uh, uh, people checks checking. Check yeah. uh, so okay. more more secure, mm -hmm. and um, it's this means also that this is slower. Some people come from uh, Ethereum and say, "But I didn't receive yet my order." Yeah. What's happening? And I was like, "Yes, <laughs> you need more patience because." Uh. If you, a block maybe it's going to come in the second third i lost for example we were inscri inscribing and we lost 17 blocks i think one time that means that you couldn't inscribe for 17 you, blocks you, yeah because you couldn't get a block okay mm. Mm -hmm. so then you need to keep trying until you get a block and then mm -hmm. it's inscribed so if you pay okay. more for this fees you are going to be first in the in the queue, mm -hmm. queue. Yeah. okay and uh, if you go very slow with the fees, you are going to be stuck. So always try to put the fees at minimum. Like it's if it's something important, you put it like higher. It's like gas, like the gas on Ethereum. Like, yeah. If if you wanted to mint, and then that there were people paying a lot of gas, right? Like the popular the gas wars 
yeah. the gas wars. Okay. Can you uh, lose those fees on Bitcoin as well if you don't get a block? Like we saw that some people like uh, sniped some uh, inscriptions in sales on Magic Eden mm -hmm. uh, because if you if you pay for an inscription at the same time that another one and you put a higher fees you can like uh, pick it uh. But, uh, it's not so simple eh? but normally when you pay for a transaction you you wait and you receive it there is no way of there is less problems that in Ethereum with these uh, wars. And I think that okay. the problem because there is a, a, a thread that is very well explained um, about this that explains how, how marketplaces work in ordinals that is not the same as in Ethereum. Like you do a transaction, then they do a chain verification or something like this. Uh, I don't want to say things that are not bad. No, it's okay. Part, but um, there is less possibilities than have a problem. Yeah, I mean, I hear about this, that it's more secure, but also, and, and not sure if you, uh, probably you are familiar because you have been um, in the ecosystem, as you said, very, very, like very involved. Also, I've heard discussions, right, with the, the so-called Bitcoin, Bitcoin OGs that aren't that interested in having uh, inscriptions, right, on their blockchain. Uh, they want to focus on the uh kind of the the making Bitcoin a system for payments, right? And they don't want to go out of that uh, use case. Um, what 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 have you hear about that? Is are there news? Is is it um, how how much of a resistance, let's say, is there uh, from from Bitcoin um, as a as a community towards ordinal? What what are what, what have you hear about that? I think that is normal that that happened because for sure, the network is more congested. You you pay way more for a transaction, so some people are not happy with that. But at the end of the day, they I don't think they can't win. They can win uh, mm -hmm. because you are creating a way more healthier ecosystem when you do inscriptions because you are putting a lot more effort to create the blocks. And at the end of the day, it's the miners that are going to work. And do the, the proof of work that are going to decide what's happening or not. You can you can tell to some miners, okay, I, we don't want inscriptions. But if the other miners say, yeah, but we are earning way more thanks to these inscriptions, and uh, we are having a more like a healthy and um, uh, spread ecosystem spread. Uh, yeah. thanks to to this. Uh, so I, I don't think. And also, why why Bitcoin is only was only created for like transactions. In fact, in if we see uh, the first uh, message that Satoshi said, there was a message inside of this. Uh -huh. So yeah. it was also meant to be used to communicate things. And yeah. I think that Satoshi, if it's still alive, that probably because we saw some movement uh, yeah. some days ago, uh, it's it's okay with inscriptions because you can put information, we can create some new things, and you can develop Bitcoin in a way that we didn't expect. It, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. What you meant? What you mean? The the there were some movement. Uh, somebody transfer Bitcoin to Satoshi's wallet, right? Like a wallet that people believe it's it was made by Satoshi, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows uh, if. If Satoshi is alive, or if it's a group, um, I'm not sure if we will ever figure it no, out, right? But I don't think so. But. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're right. It's it's uh, more use cases. People get more interested uh, because now artists, in the case of like yourself and other artists and collectors, are using Bitcoin, right, for for art collecting. That that wasn't the case in the past, and actually, kind of Ethereum grew and became super popular. But those use cases weren't available on Bitcoin, like smart contracts and NFTs, art, and, and different kind of things. And now Bitcoin uh, has that possibility as well. And if it's if Bitcoin is supposed to be like a digital currency, but people aren't using it to buy digital goods or NFTs or or doing you know things on chain, I think it's it's not great for Bitcoin, right? It's, it, it 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 will lose popularity and other other 
cryptocurrencies can take the, the, the spot eventually. Yeah, it's the first one. But um, now, as you said, there are more use cases, more options. Uh, eventually, uh, besides art, there might be other kind of digital goods. Um, probably already are uh, people describing different things, uh, not only like generative art and, and, and different sort of art. So that's exciting. And thanks for sharing that, Harto. It's good to, to learn from somebody that has that experience like firsthand. Um, what about artists on ordinals, Harto? Um, I'm, I'm, it's hard to find, you know, places to, to, to research. Ordinals, it's getting better. Now there are more marketplaces. You mentioned Magic Eden. I think there is form uh, form fu function. I, I was familiar with that one. Gamma, uh, uh, but Magic still, Eden. Uh, the, the ecosystem is small uh, uh, for, for art. Um, for example, some months ago it was very, very hard to convince people to come to, to Ordinal. Um, when we did the first drop in Vivid uh, after nine uh, with, with Medusa, uh, Racing mm -hmm. Uh, that I suggest to, to check because technically it's 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 crazy. It's very big the, the amount of code that there is inside of those inscriptions. Um, we really had to, uh, trouble to find people interested, and it changed the last maybe two months or one month that there are more people now. There are, there are artists that has been building from since the beginning, like Lulish or uh, Far or Billy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otto uh, did a lot of uh, generative art. Uh, you have Rip Cache that now it's back also. He, he did uh, some stuff early. Even Jack Butcher it's entering now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he has something in the 20 or 30k inscriptions. Uh, we are starting to see more and more uh, generative artists trying things like Chain, Chain Virus from Ethereum also. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so it's very nice. I, I am very happy to, to see this amount of people uh, because at the end of the day, if the if the artists don't come and don't create art, people are not going to be interested at all. I mean, you yeah. you can be interested with projects that are PFP and community, etc. But after that, you also want to collect some art. I think that PFPs and Dijon stuff are important are unneeded, but uh, people love uh, to collect art in Ethereum and are going to love to collect art in Bitcoin also. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. You mentioned. Far, Far was in the podcast, was one of the first guests. Um, and we were chatting about ordinals, but that was like four or five months ago. And yeah, he was very excited about it. And at the time, it was, uh, there were already some crypto wallets and marketplaces. And yeah, I think Far will be soon again in the, in the podcast, in the show. And we can, will be good to, to compare. <laughs> yeah, how was it four or five months ago and how is it now? Um, that's great, Harto. And, you know, I always ask guests um, this question. Um, so who are the artists that inspire you? Could be digital or traditional artists, three, three artists that, that you are inspired by or, or do you just enjoy their art? This one is very hard. Um, for me, my number one artist that I'm inspired right now and since almost a year, I think that Joe Peace that is uh, mm -hmm. an Ethereum uh, artist that do uh, digital and media art. He, he take like uh, videos and vintage like uh, videos and he cut it and create like this accumulation accumulation and, and loops that are crazy. It's for me, it's all the things that he do, those it's masterpieces. Uh, okay. It's not generative art. I love a lot of generative artists, but this one, like this guy, every time that he does something, he touched me a lot. Um, so I selected three different. First of all, this one because it's not related with generative art. Second one because that it's Rip Uh because Rip Cache has something that every time that you see it, you know his style and um, this re retro uh, minimalistic things. I don't know. He has. Some collections in Ethereum that are so detailed, uh, but so simple at the same time that I love it. Okay. Um, and then in generative art, I love all the class classics, uh, Map and uh, Tyler, etc., etc., etc. But I think that I'm quite in love right now with Medusa because not only Medusa. because he's with us, uh, but because he's like 
maybe I I I see him like uh, I see myself like one year ago like wanting mm. to work uh, about art and and letting my web two job etc. And um, uh, his new drop is going to be very very cool. Uh, I I love what what he he created and it's like he is finally like opening everything of his heart and saying okay I'm going full time artist. Okay. Uh, so that I, I love that, but I have a uh, hundred of artists that I love, and I, I <laughs> we could yeah. one one podcast only about. Yeah, artists. it's hard. that question is tricky, right? Because it really makes you um, narrow it down to three, and and it's uh, that's why that's why I like to ask that because it's not about you know naming your favorite tree, but it's about how you come up with the answer, right? And why why people should look at those uh, artists and it's a great way to find to find new art and new 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 artists in different fields um medusa i will i will check out medusa i, I haven't i haven't yet but uh, I, I will do you know when is his drop his next uh, release uh, i can't say it but it's going to be maybe the upcoming month let's on bibit is it, is it going to be on bibit i think so we we didn't uh, announce anything yet, but I think so. Okay, okay, okay. He was going it, to do Ethereum, it. but so maybe he's coming to like he's going to do a second drop in Ordinals. Uh, All right. Nothing like that yet. But, uh, okay. All right, Harto, it was great chatting with you. Thanks so much for sharing your journey and and explaining Ordinals Ordinal stuff and and sharing your uh, favorite artists. All the best uh, with your future with your future art career and with Vivid. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can chat again in the future. I hope so. Thank you so much. It was very interesting. I love this kind of podcast where we talk and talk and, uh, and there is, uh, yeah. because sometimes in Twitter is like uh, people cutting or shouting. Yeah. It's a different form. I also enjoy it. It's more like a casual, casual mm -hmm. chat, but other people can actually hear it and, and find it useful for discovering art, discovering technology platforms. So, and it's also great when I have guests like you that bring a new perspective into new technologies and have the experience that's that's the best way to learn also for for me so appreciate it and talk to you soon thank you bye thanks so much